Hello and welcome to our Open Computers tutorial series for version 1.3. My name is Lord Yoda and I'm here with Sangar, the lead developer of Open Computers, and Daka Total, our cameraman. In this tutorial series, we will cover various topics, starting with this video where we will take a look of all these blocks. In the second video, we want to show you how to set up a computer and install the operating system. Then we have a little video about how to operate computers. The next video then will be how to uh, write and run programs. After that, we want to take a look at components. And yeah, the next video will also be about components, but this time a bit about uh, examples for components. Uh, then a video about servers. The next video will then be about network and signals. And the last video will be about robots. So in this video, as I said, we will have a look at all the blocks and items so that you will have a bit of understanding what you're dealing with. So where should we start? Well, I suppose with the most basic one with the computer case, which is well, what you need for your basic computer. So yeah, there's multiple tiers of computer cases. Uh, these basically control how many components or items you can put into the computers. So and also the tier of item you can put into the computers. And there's also screens. So computers don't have a built-in screen, so you need a screen. And those also come in three tiers, which basically uh, determines the resolution of the screen and whether they are touch capable or not. So tier two and three are touch capable, so they can generate mouse events. Then there's the keyboard, which you need to well type on a screen. So if you want to have keyboard input, you need to um, put a keyboard either in front of a screen or attach it to a screen. And that's the two most basic blocks, basically. Another one that's pretty basic is the disk drive. And that's the one over here, which basically just allows you to put a floppy disk in and then read that from any computer uh, connected to the disk drive. So if you have another look at the computer cases here, the tier one and tier two cases, they do not have a slot for floppy disks. They only support hard drive disks. The tier, two, tier three one does have a floppy disk slot. So if you need that, can use that too. The uh, creative case, there's also a creative tier case, which is basically just a tier three case with all tier three slots, um, also has a floppy disk slot. So these are the most basic ones. Uh, these are what you need to get your first computer running. Um, what you may also need as a basic block, or well, may want to use as a basic block is the power converter, that's this block over here. Um, this one can be used to convert power from other mods, such as build craft, industrial craft, mechanism, uh, factorization, uh, thermal expansion, and so on and so forth, uh, to the uh, energy format used by internally by open computers. Um, you do not need this block if you just have one computer, for example, um, because computer cases and server racks and a few other blocks also directly accept power from these mods. If you want to have just one power source input basically to your whole open computer setup, then you may want to use this and combine it with the block above, which is the power distributor to basically feed energy to, to all your blocks. So we'll talk about this also in a later video. So then there's another pretty simple block, which is the capacitor. This just stores some energy inside the open computers network, so to say, component network, for later use. So if you have a power outage in your power supply system, um, then these capacitors will be accessed and used for energy to keep the computers running. Um, so these are the basic simple blocks. Now then there's some more advanced blocks, which are the servers. So servers are pretty much like computers, but the server racks house three servers, and each server is basically a computer. So if I take this one out here for a second. These can be opened up, and then you see it looks pretty similar to a computer case. And each of these servers in the server rack can be turned on or off individually, and basically what you have with this is a computer that has four computers in one block space, 
with some extra features which will also be explained in a later video. Uh, then there's the access point and the switch. So the access point is basically wireless networking, forwarding of wireless net me network messages, and the switch is for forwarding wired network messages sent via network cards. Um, then there's the uh, motion sensor, which allows uh, basically tracking the movements of nearby living entities via events sent to connected computers, and the geolyzer, which allows analyzing the structure of the terrain around this block. Uh, so to the right we have then two more blocks, which are the these are the hologram projectors. These are well sort of like screens, but not really. So these can project holograms, which are a 3D space of voxels, so 3D pixels that can be individually set by the computer. We'll also show these a bit, I think. And this is the redstone I/O block. This is basically an external redstone card. These allow computers to read redstone signals and output redstone signals. So, for example, to trigger uh, actu uh, pistons, for example, if you want. Um, these here are used for robots. So this is the robot assembler, which we will show in the last video. And this is the charger, which is used to recharge the energy inside a robot. Because robots also heat because robots also use energy, and so like computers, and if they run out of energy, they will just stop working. So you need to recharge them by placing them next to a charger. And finally, well, not finally, but finally for the internal stuff, this is the adapter block. This is mostly used in combination with other mods. So for example, with the uh, open components add-on, this block can be used to access functions in a bunch of blocks from other mods. For example, you can read the energy levels of energy cells and stuff like that. And finally, this is the disassembler. So this block can be used to um, basically split up items again into their individual components if you decide you don't need them any longer. So if I put in any item from open computers here, it will be um, destroyed and I will get back the items that were used to originally craft that item. So for example, if I put in a microchip, ideally I will get back four nuggets and two redstone and a transistor. There's a slight chance that um, any of these items break. So if you're really unlucky, you won't get back anything. On average, um, I think the rate is, the default chance is 5% of something breaking. So if you put in, uh, I don't know, 100 items, five of those will break. Right. And that's that. It will also work for um, servers and for robots. So if you put in a robot, you will get back the components used to build the robot. And if you put in a, a server, you will it will not destroy the items in the server. You will also get those back safely. But for the robot stuff, we will talk more about that later anyway. Also, there's cables, but those are just real. Well, they're just cables. Um, <laughs> what is worth noting is that they support uh, Forge Multipart for covering, and they also support uh, Imibis Microblocks for covering. So both of these systems are supported uh, to cover the cables and to uh, control how they connect. So let's demonstrate this. Oh, no, I don't have it in there. OK, wait, anyway. But you can use covers to split up cables if you want, or to, well, hide them. Right. All right. That's the box. Yay. OK, so that burned the blocks. So now let's take a look at the items. Well, at least some of them. Yeah, some of them. So many of the items are purely crafting materials, for example. So the alu and the button stuff and all that is purely used for crafting. So that's not that interesting. Um, but the other ones we can have a quick look at. So the CPU, for example. This is used in computers to, well, A, to get them running at all, and B, it controls uh, how many components can be connected to a computer before it won't start anymore. So components are stuff like the screen, a graphics card, a redstone I.O. block, uh, stuff like that. We will talk about that a little later. 
But just keep in mind that if you get a message like uh, too many uh, components connected to the computer, that basically means the CPU is too too weak for the number of components connected to the computer. And this, as of most things, there are three tiers. Uh, floppy disks are just that, a cheap, relatively cheap, uh, small storage medium, which can be used in the floppy disk drive. Um, graphics cards are used to uh, plot stuff to screens, so basically if you want to display some strings on screens, you will need a graphics card. These also come in three different tiers, and for the graphics card, this controls basically the resolution they support, the color depth they support, and how fast they can update the screens. Uh, so for disk drives, again, three tiers. Disk drives are the more expensive variant of storing data, and they can also be input, put into servers, for example. So servers can't use floppies directly, so if you want to use a server without a disk drive, you will need a hard drive. Uh, again, in three tiers, with different sizes in this case. Uh, the internet card is used to, uh, well, access the internet. Basically what this provides is, uh, on the one hand, uh, HTTP requests, so you can simply access stuff on the internet if you want, and alternatively it supports opening TCP sockets if you want to have more control, but uh, you, then you have to accept that you will have to code a bit more. The linked card provides a way of connecting two computers across any distance, even across dimensions, uh, to transmit messages between the two computers, so it's similar to network cards, but, well, more specific and only peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, RAM is what's used to, also required to start a computer, and this determines the actual RAM available to the computer. So, if you get any out-of-memory errors in in-game, so not, not Minecraft itself out-of-memory, <laughs> but if, you, if the computer screen says something like, uh, not enough memory, then that means you don't have enough RAM in your computer. So this limits basically the complexity of programs that can run on the computers. Uh, and and if you get this from Minecraft, that means you didn't get Minecraft enough memory. <laughs> yeah, that's something else. That has nothing to do with open computers then, exactly. Um, network cards, uh, well, they're just that. You can send network messages with those. Um, there's an extra video for those. There's also a wireless network card, which will send wireless network messages. Um, redstone cards also come in two tiers. The tier 1 is for basic redstone stuff from Minecraft, the tier 2 is for redstone from other mods. Servers are, well, they're servers, just shown them before a bit. Uh, then there's a bunch of upgrades for robots. We will talk about these more in detail in the robot video. And that's about it for the items, I think. Yeah, good. So I hope uh, you yeah, are looking forward to see all these block in action. I think we will cover mostly all of them. I think one yeah, or two we don't, but the rest... Except for the disassembler, yes. Yeah, I would say. Uh, have fun with the tutorial videos. We hope uh, you learn a lot of it. And if there should be still any questions after reviewing all the videos, please let us know. And maybe uh, if there is some topic we didn't cover, we will make a video about that as well. So basically, yeah, let's get started, more or less. Let's do this. Okay, so see you then. Bye. See you.